When we think of Dubai, some of the first few things that come to our mind are skyscrapers, sky-high mega projects, endless spending on luxury items, influencers, never-ending construction sites and international trading. It's a true symbol of wealth and luxury. Dubai is really a money-making machine that was built from nothing in the middle of a desert, driven by long-term strategic planning and smart decisions. They have created an economic model just for themselves that is radically different from any other developed country in the world. It was the first Gulf country to move away from oil and started to diversify its economy by enabling more and more business-friendly environment, world-class financial services, and establishing its tourism sector by building colossal mega-projects. International investment and real estate sector are also the biggest contributor to its economy. But now, this economic growth has come to an end, and now everything Dubai build is not enough anymore. But how? This is what Dubai looked like in 1960s. It was a small fishing settlement with 30,000 inhabitants. Its economy was dependent only on fishing and pearl trading. But soon they discovered oil fields. The income from the exploitation of this resource allowed it to invest in large infrastructure projects such as highways, ports, and industrial centers. Many of the people think that oil is the biggest income source of Dubai, but it's not true as the sector only contributes around 5% of the economy. This is because the vision of Sheikh Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum, the father of modern Dubai. Sheikh soon realized that unlike their neighbors, Dubai does not have large oil reserves, and they would start to deplete in a few decades. And they should also establish new sectors, so they can survive without oil. Therefore, they adapted a new economic model that only suits to Dubai. After exporting oil from their land, they built ports to establish Dubai as the regional trading hub and also launched their new local airline Emirates, which helped Dubai to connect to some of the major cities in the world. Up until then, there was another city in the Middle East that basically had the position that Dubai has today. This was the city where Western companies had their regional headquarters, a city with fancy restaurants and luxury shopping malls where white millionaires and people from the entire region come to have fun and spend their best times in the city. This city was Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. But in the 1970s when the Lebanese civil war happened, Beirut was out of the map due to investors' concerns about their investments in the nation. Dubai immediately filled the gap by allowing more and more Western banks and international law firms to establish franchises in Dubai offering them a safe and Western-friendly environment. Rich people who had parked their money in Beirut now started to transfer it into Dubai, where they now also have all of the professional services for them. Dubai's local airline also made Dubai more accessible to these investors and tourists who had come to spend their money in Dubai's never-ending shops, luxury hotels and restaurants. And on top of that, the ruler of Dubai also launched another program which ended up creating its highly saturated real estate industry. Since mid-1990s, Dubai is building large real estate projects endlessly, welcoming more and more international tourists and getting rid of its oil dependency. Dubai also stands out for not having taxes at its ports both for imports and exports, to the point that in 2004 it was already the third largest re-exporting center of the world only behind Hong Kong and Singapore. Thanks to the development of industries, financial and real estate sectors with hefty tax incentives for individuals and companies, Dubai became the largest immigration location and a prime spot for wealthy rich people to park their money. This is how Dubai created an economic model just for themselves, which no other developed country has ever used. But this strategy has now come to an end. Before further moving on, if you have watched this video so far, then please hit the like and subscribe button to support the channel. when their wealthy neighbors were enjoying their lives and spending their oil money in Dubai. Dubai from the beginning has always established itself as a luxury hotspot and ran away from being too dependent on oil, and the city faced basically zero competition in what it offered. But now, as the demand of oil prices is expected to fall further in the future, due to EV boom and climate concerns, there are more and more countries in the Middle East that are on a path to become the next Dubai. According to the IMF, the Gulf countries could deplete their financial reserves as soon as 2034, which rings the alarm bell for their future economic growth. 
It means that they have to completely reform their economies as soon as possible. Otherwise, they will be facing some really bad outcomes. And all of Gulf countries are very aware of this. And that's why they are all announcing grand future plans to restructure their economies and getting rid of their oil dependency in the coming years. For example, Saudi Arab is building the Neom city and the line Bahrain and Qatar are also making headlines globally to be the next best spot for investors to invest their money, giving huge competition to Dubai's economy. The government of Dubai has also borrowed a lot to help its economy grow and is surrounded by very conflictive countries like Iran. Despite the glamorous city life, Dubai's biggest challenge is desertification. The continuous advance of desert has created some severe issues for Dubai. In the span of just two decades from 2000 to 2020, Dubai lost more than 60% of its fertile land. It is harmful for Dubai's economy, as it increases its dependence on food imports. To solve this problem, in 2010, Sheikh Mohammed launched an initiative also known as One Million Tree Project, with the goal of stopping desertification and increase green areas in the city. However, this project failed, and most of the trees died due to Dubai's harsh weather conditions. Another problem for Dubai which is becoming the cause of its economic collapse is its huge debt problem. In recent years, Dubai has borrowed a lot of money to fuel its economic growth, stagnated by the COVID-19. The debt has now reached a whopping 120% of the GDP. If a nation wants to pay its debt, there are three ways to do that. Number first is by raising taxes on citizens. The second is through more debt as the United States government does when it issues bonds and number third, by printing more money. But in the case of Dubai, they cannot pay the debt by printing money since dirham, the local economy is priced against the dollar. In addition, the government cannot issue bonds to pay off old debt as the central bank of the UAE does not allow it. Then the Dubai government would have no other choice but to raise taxes on companies or individuals. This could cause those who moved just to avoid paying taxes to start thinking about leaving. 85% of the residents living in Dubai are foreigners. Dubai is building housing projects at a pace at which it never should. If the nation does not want to give citizenship to the foreigners, then who would live in the country for their entire life? If people will not live there, then who would live in those colossal concrete structures? Most of the foreign workers in Dubai are laborers who came to the city with great expectations of earning good wages. But these workers could never afford to live there. The working conditions for these workers are precisely one of the biggest criticism that the city receives. Cases have been reported that once they start working, they are not free to leave their jobs and their passport is withheld. Also the weather and the rest times are not the best. These are some of the major challenges that Dubai's economy is facing right now. But Dubai has a history of always solving its problems in a unique way and it would also find some way to recover from current situation. We can only hope for the best. As Dubai has created a unique model and emerged as a global startup hub in middle of a desert, there was another country in the 1980s whose economy was rivaling with the United States and soon about to become the next global superpower. And yes, this country is Japan. And if you want to know about how one single move of America proved to be the downfall of the entire Japanese economy, click on the video to the right and I will see you there.